Hello everyone, this is David Moffat from Axe Annex Tabletop Gaming and today for I have for you a little video about basing. I call this one Basing of the Shadow Deep. This is a requested video about how to do the basing that I do. It's very quick, it's very easy, very simple to make if you have the materials. If you do not have the materials, you can go to Geek Gaming and buy them because this is where I got the idea from. Luke's APS put out a video where he's showing off his new uh, quick basing techniques and I looked at it and I'm like, I can do that. I got all that stuff and then I did it. Maybe I did it even a little better. You can be the judge. All right, let's head down below and check it out. So here's some tools that you will find useful. The most important one is a container. I like these little portion cup containers. I like these little uh, portion cup containers with a lid. They uh, work nice for dipping the model in. It's a good size. This uh, I think is a 30 millimeter base. So they should fit. They should accommodate most bases pretty nicely. You can get a bigger container if you need to. You're gonna want some stuff to do some chop. You could use one of these guys. These are good for chopping up greenery. You just put it in there and you squeeze it around. Scissors. You probably know how to use scissors. And nippers. You probably have some nippers here. They can be handy. Use what you got. You know, whatever works well. The theory behind all this is to layer up. So you're going to start with some fine sand. There's different places you can get fine sand, and I don't know where they are. I got these from the clay cliffs of my home up in the Yukon. It's a very nice fine sand. Sterilize it, of course. I like to have a healthy amount of the sand in there. Next up is some tea leaves. This is a mixture of uh, an orange pico, green tea, probably some mint tea. It's different tea bags that uh, we drank the tea from that we let them dry out. Makes for a very nice deadish ground cover. Add some tonal variation in there. Stir it around. The sand is very heavy. It mostly likes to stay on the bottom. So next I'll add some soil flock. It's kind of a greeny brownie color. I've had this stuff for a while. I'm pretty pretty much running out. We're gonna need a heck of a lot in there. Just put a little bit like that. Stir it up. You don't have to stir it up every single stage. I'm just doing that to show you how it all mixes together in the various stages. See how it's already taking form it's something that could be natural. And it has some grass flock, a much brighter green, and some yellows in there. Toss a bit of that into the bucket. Now I'll start adding some larger, bulkier stuff. Here's some shale. I don't really need the big chunks. The little chunks will do just fine. The nice thing about shale though is that it breaks up in your fingers. So if you need finer chunks, you can do so. If you get stuff like this, you can pick it out, or you can chop it up and add it in. I will chop it up. That should be enough shale. It's, yeah, it's kitty litter. Kitty litter will make for nice lighter colored stones. And this stuff's usually pretty fine. Right, how's that looking now? Oh yeah, it's looking way too full. This is the uh, ground part. This is the heavier bits. It's going to stay near the bottom. So what I'm going to do is transfer some of it to another container for further storage. Alright, perfect for ground cover. Next up is the fun stuff, the greenery. So, moss, decorative moss. Got it at the dollar store. Sever this one. This one was a gift from a friend. Tiny bit of this reddish moss. Don't need a heck of a lot. Should be good. Green moss. Those twiggy bits. About to cut those up right now. This stuff is a little bit spongier. White moss. Doesn't usually tear up that easily. 
Usually you have to snip it. Just put a little more green moss in there. Let's see how it does. So the first thing I'll do, now just pack it in. Just pack it in. This is where this tool often comes in handy. Just grind it just like that. This guy's nice and easy. You don't usually make a heck of a lot of this stuff. How's it looking? Put it in the chopper one more time. Still kind of springy and bunchy, so just cut it up a little. Don't snip your fingers. Pieces like this would be too long for a piece. All right, looking pretty good. And there we are, some cover, ground cover. We're not done yet. The last thing we need, and I don't really know how to source this out. I bought one of those cheap grass mats off of the uh, ones you see like on uh, Wish and AliExpress. And it came with static grass, like some really artificial looking bright green flock that always falls off the map. And it's super bright, which is awesome. It really uh, contrasts with the drabber colors. And the static grass lives up to its name for the most part. When you put it on, it really, really does stand up. It is aptly named. So yeah, that was just leavings in the bag from the grass mat. So we'll throw that in. Yeah, static grass is easy enough to find. I just don't know about this brighter green stuff. I haven't seen any at least. Who does out there? All right. Well, it looks pretty good. Now we're going to need to test it. Good thing I have 18 skeletons to do some basing on. So I better get started. Let's bring them down. So on these skeletons, I put the base color down. So I'm going for like a swampy earth color, the greeny mossy effect. And it has little bits of grit, which is the fine sand. And that's maybe some flock in there. But really, fine sand is all you need in the end. And what this does, it's a mixture of gesso, ink, probably craft paint. That's probably what I put in there. I made it a while ago. When you paint it on there, it uh, creates a nice grippy effect. So I find the, uh, the glue doesn't seem to shrink away as much for some reason when that's on there. It's a nice surface area to work with. The glue I use is Gorilla Wood Glue. So I take the miniature, take the Gorilla Wood Glue, and I slather it on. A nice healthy paste. I find the Gorilla Wood Glue doesn't shrink up too much, and it's very, very sturdy. I always found PVA a bit delicate. The regular school white glue. I haven't tried good quality PVA though, so that might have a similar effect for you. So we take the dude, take the mixture, and just swirl them around, dig them in. Right down in there. Hard to see, of course. But yeah, you want to just kind of roll them around a bit. Take them out, tap them off. And then, you know, it has a nice swampy base. There's a little white spot of glue in there, so I'm just going to sprinkle bits of stuff. Give it a little tap. Tap it off. It looks better. This stuff is full of fresh green, so it's a little hard to get to the sand. We have to shake it on. It should be good. Let's see, he's got a little bit of this stuff. It's probably not going to stick. Let's see. Oh, looks like it is going to stick. So yeah, just take a look at it and see if anything doesn't quite make sense to you. I don't feel like this little bit of red moss should be there. So I'll take that off, but I think the rest of it looks good. So we'll put him aside and we'll just keep going. Once you get into a rhythm, it's very quick. And there we have it, the basing of the Shadow Deep. Hopefully this is enough skeletons and skeleton knights to do my game well. well Thanks for watching this video, everyone. If you have any questions or comments, just, you know, leave them in the section below where it's appropriate. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.